Un procès que l'on retrouve encore chez Nietzsche lui-même et qui se poursuit de nos jours, mais qui commence déjà entre les évangiles et Paul, entre Paul et Jacques, puis dans les fondements du monachisme, puis bien entendu dans les diverses réformes, etc., etc. Tout se passe comme si le christianisme avait développé, comme nulle autre religion, à la fois une affirmation de puissance, de domination et d'exploitation dont Rome aura été le symbole et la lourde réalité, et une affirmation inverse de dépouillement et d'abandon de soi dont le point de fuite serait l'auto-évanouissement. La question, bien entendu, est la question de la nature et de la structure de cet auto-évanouissement. Dépassement dialectique ou décomposition nihiliste ou ouverture de l'ancien à l'absolument nouveau. Point de suspension ou d'interrogation. Voilà, je m'en tiens à cette très brève caractérisation. Je n'en tire maintenant aucune conclusion. Je pense simplement qu'elle indique la direction d'une problématique sans laquelle il est impossible de considérer sérieusement aujourd'hui la question du sens du monde tel que l'Occident nous la livre en héritage. Cette direction est au moins, pour s'en tenir à l'essentiel, sous sa forme la plus réduite, celle-ci. Notre tâche n'est pas de mener à l'accomplissement d'un nouveau royaume divin, ni en ce monde, ni dans un autre. Elle n'est pas non plus de retrouver l'unité propre immanente à un monde du mythe qui s'est décomposé dans l'occidentalisation ou christianisation du monde, mais elle est de penser un sens de monde dans un monde divisé de son propre être-monde, dans un monde acosmique et athéologique, mais pourtant toujours monde, en quelque façon, toujours le nôtre et celui de la totalité des étangs. Je vous remercie. Feel like Martin Heidegger is in, is in this room, but he would be surprised that you are able to use Christianity in order to do what he called the Verbinden der Metaphysik. And certainly, it should be also Verbinden is not overcoming of metaphysics, nicht overcoming of the tradition, because in overcoming there is still this action uh, involved. Verbinden is like you are, what, how would we call it, Virginia, the, uh, ein Schmerz, if you are, if you, have, you are in pain, and the pain is going away, is sometimes at least. <laughs> going away, unnoticeable, so to speak, but still doing it, letting the pain disappear, maybe this is a kind, the kind of disappearance of metaphysics. Uh, was for Heidegger always something which could not come from outside, but from inside of <coughs> physics. But he never kind of pointed at Christianity. His idea was that it was actually Greek philosophy uh, doing 
uh, which, which tells us the story of overcoming also our uh, way of thinking, our way of feeling, which is so strongly connected still with the Greek uh, world. So, in some way, this is very uh, new, what you do here, by demonstrating that a worldview, like the Christian worldview, which is attributed to install metaphysics, is also the possible way out, the source of letting it go. Because that we have to let go of metaphysics. That is an understanding philosopher have since at least Hegel and even uh, more before that. That we have to let go, that we cannot allow doctrines and theories to dictate what kind of life we have to live. And that we have to find a way how to, how to live the life first before we uh, have a theory about it. That's the way I phrase it. That have a life. Get a life before you get a theory. But your, but your way of uh, doing is to, uh, to say, no, wait, the theory, the dogmas, the ideologies, at least if they're Christian, have an inbuilt way out because they are paradoxical, because they are, all their fullness is aimed at emptying something like that. Also to find this within. Christianity is, I think, a very, uh, very important uh, way to deal with this project all philosophers share nowadays, is to live a non-metaphysical life, not an anti-metaphysical, totally right, but how to live a non-metaphysical life after metaphysics, if there's still humanity, if there's still life possible for us. So. I think in, in this way you you contribute uh, to this to this enterprise very well. It's a very very amazing. And so you, you when you say I'm in the end, you don't want to draw any co conclusion from uh, from it. No, that you do it is a conclusion. That you saw this and you had this intuition here already. That Christianity <coughs> could help to do that. Could maybe a, be a crucial element of this. Uh, getting out uh, by getting in. I think that is another way how did I phrase it. It's getting out by getting in. Getting out of metaphysics <coughs> by, by getting into it. You know. But he thought you have to go through the whole history of philosophy back to the pre Socratics to find out where, where it started. Right? And Jean Luc now tells us that there is another powerful, maybe more powerful, that's Christianity. And which has the same uh, power to, to make us uh, view the world and may now have the power to make us forget this view. Okay, that is kind of not a question, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the question would be, no, would you, you see yourself in this tradition of the non-metaphysical? Yes, of course. Of course, Ivan, I, I, I thank you uh, for all what you say, because I, all, all is very important in that. And because, according with, with your suggestion, I was very brief, you know, I was <laughs> honest. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it could have been one hour or more. Uh, well, I could say first, of course, all that is, is a way to resume with uh, uh, going beyond metaphysics. The way to, to, to resume with a non-metaphysic way of thinking. 